and gentlemen, the President of the United States and the Vice President of the United States. Good morning. Please, I thank you very much for being here and for a warm welcome. As a Californian, I've long recognized the importance of the Pacific region, and I'm pleased that during this administration, we've been able to expand and deepen our ties with the countries of the Pacific Basin. And I look forward to hearing your views on the issues that we face. The market-oriented economies of the Pacific have achieved a sustained and impressive economic growth. We in the administration value highly our relationship with the countries of the Pacific. We look forward to working with them to develop policies which will sustain the impressive record of economic growth for the benefit of our citizens, of our Pacific partners, and our global free market system. President Theodore Roosevelt said almost at the turn of the 20th century years ago that the Atlantic was the ocean of the present and the Pacific is the ocean of the future. Well, I think his vision was a clear one, and today I think we've seen proof of that. I congratulate all of you on your foresight and commitment to recognizing the importance of the Pacific to our nation's future and acting upon it. Your advice and counsel will be important to our continued effort. Your group includes four senators, four members of the House, seven members of the executive in their unofficial capacity. And I think this demonstrates a bipartisan commitment of both branches. And all of us are in your debt for what you're doing and wish you well. Thank you very much. Right here, and his wife's in the hospital. How are you? You? Good to see you. Hello, Good Bill. Good to see you, Hugh. Right. Thank you. That ends the formal All right. Office. Thank you very much. Representatives of the, the banking and the farm credit uh, industry here in the country, and uh, we're, uh, I know we're all pleased. Well, I know we're here to discuss issues that are concerned to you and uh, farm credit. I would have to say, in spite of maybe some of the natural disasters, probably heads the list. And we've been watching the farm credit situation closely and know that farmers are laboring under a debt burden, and much of that comes from the late 1970s when interest rates and inflation were too high. And the key now, I think, is to give the people on the farm time enough to work out their past problems. And uh, with time, lower interest rates and low inflation, I think maybe farmers will have more secure operations in the future. We've designed a four-part program, which I'm going to ask Jack to highlight here for you during the discussion. And uh, I'd also like to give you an opportunity to raise other issues that may be of concern to you. And, uh, then toward the end, we're going to let the press come in here and we're going to make a statement about what uh, Jack is going to outline to you. And other things so well, thank you, Mr. President. And uh, let me say that both low inflation and lower interest rates that all of us are bringing about. And I'm pleased to announce today a four part program that will permit many troubled farmers to put together financial plans that will give them more secure hope for the future. Secretary Block will provide a more detailed discussion, but let me give you the highlights. Uh, the first, I've directed the Farmers Home Administration to agree to defer for five years up to 25% of the principal and interest payments owed by farmers who need breathing room to return to a sound financial footing. And these deferrals will be made available on a case-by-case -case basis as part of comprehensive transition plans to get farmers back on their feet. Second, in order to assist those who do not participate in the FMHA programs, we'll be making available $630 million in loan guarantees that will be used to facilitate additional lending by private banks as part of financial recovery plans. 
Third, we'll be enlisting the aid of experts from the community to help farmers develop financial plans. And fourth, Farmers Home will expand its ability to serve the public by contracting with local banks and other financial institutions to handle routine paperwork processing in areas that have experienced delays and backlogs. This, we believe, is a balanced approach that treats farmers as individuals and that recognizes our basic objective must be to help people through temporary difficulties, not create a massive new federal program that will destroy the private credit system that serves the majority of farmers' needs. End of statement. Once again, if I might add one point, I think it's important that we all appreciate that this package is a debt restructuring, debt management package, which is really what farmers need. based on the belief that the future will be better than the past and that the right program is a transitional program that helps farmers get from the high inflation, high interest, economic disasters of the previous administration to the stable growth, low inflation, and lower interest rates that all of us are bringing about. And so I am pleased to announce today a four-part program that will permit many troubled farmers to put together financial plans that will give them more secure hope for the future. And uh, first, I have directed the Farmers Home Administration to agree to defer for five years up to 25% of the principal and interest payments owed by farmers who need breeding room to return to a sound financial footing. And these deferrals will be made available on a case-by-case -case basis as part of a comprehensive transition plan to get farmers back on their feet. Second, in order to assist those who do not participate in the FMHA programs, we'll be making available $630 million in loan guarantees that will be used to facilitate additional lending by private banks as part of financial recovery plans. Third, we'll be enlisting the aid of experts from the community <coughs> to help farmers develop financial plans. And fourth, Farmers Home will expand its ability to serve the public by contracting with local banks and other financial institutions to handle routine paperwork processing in areas that have experienced delays and backlogs. And we think this is a balanced approach that treats farmers as individuals, recognizes that our basic objective must be to help people through temporary difficulties and not create a massive new federal program that will destroy the private credit system that serves the majority of farmers' needs. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. We are here to thank the, to mark the progress, I should say, of the fight against drug abuse and to commit ourselves to an even greater number of drug abuse. We raised a battle flag and declared war on one of the gravest problems that I think is facing our nation. Action progressed during these past three years. Permissive attitudes are giving way to a new sense of responsibility, hopeless in the fight. Concerned parents are banding together and hundreds of community and business organizations and know to drugs. At the federal level, we've taken strong measures to crack down on big money drug traffickers and to catch drug smugglers in the act. Yet we all have facilities seeking every opportunity to promote an anti-drug pro-achievement generation. In her travels, She's come to all of us. If we work together, become more involved in our 1984 National Strategy for Prevention of Drug Abuse and Drug Trafficking, the program that is now in place. We're on the right track, 
We don't need to change direction, but we do need to step up the pace. The federal government will redouble its efforts and commitment of private industry, public organizations, local government, and citizen volunteers to all of us. And I know that for each of you here today, there are thousands of other caring Americans who are also giving of themselves. None of you ever expected an opportunity to recognize you today. As chairman of the Texans War on Drug Committees, Mr. Ross Perot is helping to make Texas one of the worst places in the world for drug users, pushers, dealers, and traffickers. And his committee is now a model for many other states. Mrs. Marsha Manat Schuhart and Mrs. Loretta Siswinder have contributed unsparingly of their time, energy, and talents to make lasting contributions to the National Drug Abuse Prevention Program. Mrs. Schuhart was the infamous DC Comics, a division of Warner Communications, represented by William Siren, and the, as a local source of credible information and technical assistance on drug use and abuse, patient retail pharmacies. Each of you is demonstrating the unique American spirit of volunteerism. In your own way, you're helping resolve the drug abuse problem in a more effective manner than we could ever do with large federal programs. We're grateful for the people you've helped and the people whose lives intercept and keep drugs from crossing our borders and coming into the country. I think we all know that the real victory will only come not when we keep on trying, just trying to take the drug away from the customer, when we take the customers away from the drug. And that's when we win. <laughs> business. I know that both of you have a strong personal interest in this proclamation and we're grateful to you for it.
Mr. President, we understand, sir, you're going to propose a series of uh, summit meetings with the Soviets that are of a little different character along the Vladivostok model. Is that correct, sir? Uh, we're exploring a lot of things, Sam. But, uh, we're asking a question on the campus. <laughs> uh, we're, we're exploring a, a lot of things and a lot of alternatives for ourselves to determine what we think is, is best. Well, some columnists wrote this morning that you might do that, and they also say you take a pretty hard line from a I never take hard lines with anyone. They also say that you're going to put arms control as a very low priority, that it really doesn't matter. No, <laughs> it does matter. It matters until we can get rid of nuclear weapons throughout the world. Ambassador Hartman, are you telling the President that the Soviets are ready to deal with him, or are you saying that they're still going to be in transit? Well, I'll give my advice to the President first. Vice, please. Thank you. <laughs> nice to see you, Mr. Secretary. Yeah. I think we're going to see a little more in the next couple of weeks, too. That's all I'm saying. So, knowing that the warm September is warm, I, I said that warm weather. <laughs> I don't know how much 